the key thing that makes us uh, provide this mixed workload capability, meaning, hey, I don't have to worry about what my workflow of my application is. The storage array would handle it. The ASIC makes the difference, right? The ASIC looks at the data when a host writes data into your into the storage and says, okay, here is my data portion of it, and here is my control portion of it, and I will handle all the data, and let I let the CPU take care of what it needs to do. Right? So we have that ability to split the data and make sure that if you are using a data mining application versus a OLTP-based, single transaction-based application, that you get similar performance on, if you, even if you go combine. Uh, two of the big companies who work in this environment, both Microsoft as well as Oracle, they have written independent papers. They have went and go, went deployed data mining applications with their SQL Server and as well as, as well as Oracle, and also used transaction-based applications. They have found no difference between the two, which is a clear justification that hey, three power array does what it tells you tells it does, right? And the third thing is the virtualization itself. This is the fine-grained virtualization that's built into the box. It's nothing to do with the external virtualization. It's how we manage the drives, the disk drives that are inside the system. Um, any, any drives or any number of drives that are in the system are from the three-part perspective, they all share the workload. So if you have 50 or 100 drives in the system and an application gets the performance of all the 100 drives in the system, so you go ahead and you want to increase your capacity to from whatever, 50 terabytes to 100 terabytes, and you add more disk drives. If By doing that, you're not just increasing the capacity on the three-part storage, you're also increasing the performance. Because as in, as in, once you add these new drives into the system, it, the data gets spread across all the other drives or the new drives that you added into your system. So when you add capacity, automatically you get a higher performance too. So that's the three main things that makes us very unique to deliver this, the, or double the number of VMs that you would deploy on a per lane basis in a, VM, uh, in a VMware or any hypervised environment. Next slide. Um, we have worked very closely with VMware for quite some time, even prior to the acquisition of HP, and now so much more. We are, we are working very closely with VMware on a lot of different things, right? Um, well, within, when VMware had version 3.5, uh, we worked with them to come up with this innovative way of doing queuing when you consolidate a lot of these VMs on a single box. Three parts, Unique has all our messaging has always been a higher level of consolidation. We have a lot of customers who have deployed different kinds of workload, uh, whether it's PDI, whether it's server virtualization, or standalone databases. They all access the same storage. There is no separate storage infrastructure that you need. And while doing that, a lot of one of the key things we ran into in a VMware environment is this queuing issue. Because if there are a lot of VMs try to access a single core on, on, on the storage side, and if it was not able to handle the incoming requests, uh, we work with VMware to say, okay, let's go tune what gets to this port versus what gets to a different port. So we have been working very closely for quite some time to develop this unique capability. Next slide. Uh, in addition to it, starting in vSphere 4.1, VMware introduced a couple of unique capabilities that storage can take advantage of. And they coined it under the umbrella VAAI, which most of you might be familiar with, which is vStorage API for array integration. Uh, in vSphere 4.1, they have three unique capabilities. Um, Hardware-assisted locking is one, full copy is another, and block zero is another. Uh, out of the, all these three, Typically, every storage vendor implements it, right? Any storage vendor who says, hey, I have the VAAI integration has these capabilities. Even then, three parts implementation is very unique in all these three. Um, let's take an example of hardware-assisted locking. What it means is, prior to 4.1, when you want to update, if you have 20 VMs on a LAN, 
and you need to update some metadata information for one VM, it used to lock the entire run. So all the other 19 VMs were paused for milliseconds or whatever when the data was being updated. But starting 4.1, the vendor said, okay, let's go lock only the region where the data is being updated. We don't need to go lock the entire run, right? So that capability was introduced in vSphere. So any storage vendor who implements hardware locking gets that. But so 3 par, why, what's unique about 3 par implementation, right? One of the key things is whenever we have to go make these determination, whether do I need to update it, do I need to lock it, there's always these comparisons that happen, right? In every storage array, comparisons are done on the, on the CPU, which means it is taking away cycles to serve the host I.O. Right? There's a, there is a, an impact. If you are consolidating 10 VMs, probably not an issue on a whole array. If you have 50 VMs, probably not. But if when you say I'm going to have 500 VMs on a, on a single array, yes, there is this comparisons do make a difference. Even if it takes one second, it makes a difference. So that's where 3 part is very unique. Because all comparisons happen in the ASIC. We never consume any of the CPU cycles. So it's very unique in the way we implement hardware secret locking. Full copy means, okay, when I'm going to copy the data on a, from one LAN to a different LAN, uh, I don't have to go all the way back to ESX host to say where and what to copy, right? ESX host can say copy block one to block 50 from this location to this location, and that's pretty much it. And leave the control to the array because array does it best. VMware does not have to be involved or ESXOS doesn't have to be involved in this type of data movement, right? And full copy implementation is, so is exactly that. It's under the, from the basic SCSI command called xcopy. It's implemented on that technology. But essentially saying, storage vendors, you do the job best, you move the data. I don't have to, all I have to tell you is what to move, but you go move the data. When we do that, three-part implementation is unique, right? It's different from the other implementations. Uh, there are a couple of benefits that you get. One is, with this approach, when you move the data, we move only the written data. We do not move, if you have a VM of 100 gig and say 20 gig was written, when you make a clone of this VM, we copy only 20 gig. We do not copy the remaining 80 gig. So you get capacity efficiencies much faster too, you know, because you're copying only 20 gig of data and not 100 gigs of data, right? And you can use this process also, to convert, if you were using a full provision VMDK to be a thin provision VMDK, right? You have that ability to do thin conversion on a on an ongoing basis with with this implementation. And the third thing is block zero. Essentially, it says, "Hey, reserve the space amount of space on the storage by writing zeros to it." Right? Typically, if when you are creating a VM in in, in format called Ether zero thick or a thick VMDK, VMware tells go write zeros to this location. The, the main reason that they do that is they can guarantee that when a customer or when a host requests uh, capacity, they have it allocated. They, the storage doesn't have to go allocated uh, when it needs it, right? Uh, that's the main reason. So every vendor has to go write zeros for an allocated block, allocated capacity or a region. In three par, it's, it's unique. We have the ASIC which does the zero detect, right? It, it detects if there is a sequence of zeros and whether they are real zeros or whether it's just free space. We leverage that capability and when the user or when the VMware host says, go write zeros, we don't have to write anything. We just map it and say, okay, from region one to region 100, there are zeros. So if you want to create a VMDK which in the eager zero thick format, which VMware recommends if you are using any fault tolerant VMs or if you need a high performance VMs, they recommend you to create this eager zero thick VMDK. If you do that on the three part storage, you will get the performance of what VMware says. And from a capacity point of view, you are consuming zero bytes. You never consume even a single byte because we just map it and tell VMware or the host say, yes, I have written and here is your allocated blocks. So it's very unique. You can get the benefits of what it's intended for, plus the storage benefits of maximizing your savings. You don't have to 
invest additional capacity just because you're, you require VMs to be high performance. Of one of, now moving ahead from higher degrees of consolidation, all these topics made customers or provided customers with the ability to have a higher degree of consolidation. So moving ahead to make, making things simple, uh, one of the key things that we learned from our customers was, uh, especially very true in an ESX or a vSphere environment, let's say you have five hosts in your ESX cluster, and you have, let's say, 10 volumes that you want to go provision to these five hosts. Typically, that means I need to do 50 times, five times 10, 50 commands to say, export volume one to host one, export volume two to host one, 10 times, and then again, go back and do these 10 things for all the five hosts. Very time consuming and error prone, right? And you don't want to be doing this, especially when, say, you add a new host, guess what? You need to go redo this. You add a new LAN, you need to go redo this. So it becomes very manual and uh, error prone when you have to keep on doing this on an ongoing basis, right? So what we designed is a concept called autonomic groups. Essentially what that means is from an end user's perspective, you always look at this ESX cluster as a set, as a cluster, right? And anything you do is for this cluster. So we let the customers define a set which is comprised of all these hosts that we want. And similarly, from a storage perspective, we can go define all these volumes to be saying, hey, here is my volume set. Now, with a single command, we can export all these volumes to all these hosts. So it's three steps to create all or export all your blunts to all the ESX hosts instead of going to do 50 times. And the beauty of it is, not just during initial configuration, but you go add a new LAN, it does it automatically. If you have written a script, you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? So, you, or if you add a new host, it exports all these LANs to these new hosts. So all these things are pretty much automated. Next slide. A um, couple of other things that really enables customers to uh, have a higher degree of flexibility and simplification is we have the plugin to the vCenter. Essentially, as I was saying, it lets the VMware administrators a full view of a VM to the LAN mapping. Here is my VM, it's mapped to this data store, it is mapped to this particular LAN. They get the entire end-to-end -end visibility. And this provides VMware administrators with the ability to make educated decisions to say, hey, my VM is not performing right, maybe it's on a SATA LAN which is on SATA drives, and I can take this and move it to a LAN which is comprised of fiber channel drives. We can do a storage in motion, right? It moves the control from, or gives additional control to VMware administrators to be able to make these intelligent decisions because they own the application space. And we have the three-part recovery manager, essentially the ability, the ability for rapid recovery of your VMs. Say your, you want to recover your VM back from a snapshot, it's, uh, it's almost within two minutes you can go recover your VM. And you can go recover your files within a VM, it's not just the entire VM. You can go recover files inside a VM. And we have also integrated with uh, the Site Recovery Manager, which is the VMware's product to provide the disaster recovery uh, capability. Uh, one of the key things that as VMware implementers within your environment, storage and VMware implementer, implementers, you should look at it and say, I mean, you, you, you would always hear comments about, hey, I have X degree of uh, integration or I have y, y levels of integration into the uh, VMware infrastructure. But what's important that you should look at is, from a business point of view, does the storage provide me with rapid recovery solutions? Does it provide me with disaster recovery solutions? Does it provide the necessary performance and scalability that my business needs? Right? If these things are met, then you have all the levels of integration that you really need. Next slide. Um, from a thin provisioning point of view, uh, Threefold has been quite a leader in how we do thin provisioning. Uh, in addition to thin provisioning, I would also like to highlight uh, the space reclamation capability. Uh, unique to three-part implementation, uh, if you, we all know people constantly 